Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick, where my purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. And today I've got a great video. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time because it combines, in my mind, the best of both worlds, and that is the keto terranian diet. Now, I, I don't know if this term has been used before, so I may be creating something new here. I don't know, but anyway, I love being able to combine these two, and I'm going to show you how in just a little while. Watch to the very end because we're going to show you all the foods that you want to be eating on this diet. And I promise, I promise you, trust me on this, you're going to want to watch it to the end. But before we get started, I always like to give a shout out to my rock stars out there because I just love celebrating your accomplishments. And this one is a really good one. So you're going to want to make sure you, you listen to this one to the end too. It's not very long, but I'll tell you, it is going to warm your heart and hopefully not make you cry. Well, this is from Queen W. So Queen W, thank you so much for this testimonial. Dr. Nick, thank you. Your information is the best. I spent 20 years having my babies and gaining weight. I woke up one day, the mom of 14 kids. Did she just say 14 kids? Yeah, she said 14 kids. Weighing 315 pounds. That's amazing. I've tried lots of diets, but never stuck to anything long enough to see much results. I started 2019 at 280 pounds, started keto intermittent fasting, and today I am 195 pounds, 25 pounds from my goal weight of 170. I soak up all your information videos and try to apply it in my life. I get this, this once morbidly obese mama is now overweight quote unquote, just overweight, and heading towards normal range. I never want the word obese attached to my name again, and you won't. I have full faith and confidence in you. Queen W, you are not going to have that title anymore. 120 pounds down, 25 more to go. Thank you for instructing me and inspiring me. Well, like I said, Queen W, you are an inspiration to so many people, and that's why I had to read your testimonial, because it literally brought me to tears the first time I heard it. And I, I tell you what, I celebrate you. You are amazing. You are a rock star. And I applaud you. And our whole community does. So anyway, thank you so much for sharing that. And by the way, guys, you might not all have results like that. We are losing 120 pounds, but that's okay. If you lose 10, if you lose 15, it could be life-changing. It could be transformational. It could be the difference of adding another 10 years, 20 years, 30 years onto your life expectancy. So please, don't compare yourself to others. You guys are going to get great results too. And, and, and one other thing, if you want more help, many of you know already, you've signed up for it, but we've got a keto course. And I like to say, I'm telling you, it is the best keto course out there. It is by far the most comprehensive, the most complete. It's got everything from beginning to end. We will hold your hand the whole way through everything from meal planning to diet guide to if you go out to restaurants, what can you eat at some of the most famous, most common restaurants. It's got a roadmap all the way through. We will give you the macro calculators, everything, the, the dinner planning, the lunch, the breakfast, the recipe book, everything is in this. So if you want more information about it, check out the link below. I'll put it right in the description and you can see if it's a fit for you. If not, just continue to watch my videos and I'm glad you could do that too. But anyway, like I said, watch to the end and make sure you like, you share, you comment and subscribe. So this video is all about the keto terranian diet. And like I said, I don't know if I made that term up or not, but I'd like to think so. But anyway, I know a lot of you are thinking, well, Dr. Nick, you're, you're the keto guy. You're the keto guru. Well, I'll tell you, I like a lot of different diets. I even do the paleo diet sometimes. But this one here, I especially love this one. And I know you're thinking, like I said, you're all about keto. But here's the thing. I'm 100% Italian. I grew up eating Mediterranean. I grew up eating all these kind of foods. So when I saw this overlap between the two, it excited me because you know what? You could have the best of both worlds, the best that keto's got to offer, the best the Mediterranean diet has to offer because we all hear about this. We all hear the Mediterranean diet. Well, people live to 100 on that diet. The oldest people in the world are the people in the Mediterranean region. They just live so long, so healthy. There's no heart disease and cancers and things like that. I want to live like that too, right? And maybe you do too. But the Mediterranean's not really a diet per se. It's more like a region. It really is just an area of the world. So it's a region of typically Greece, Italy, France, and Spain. And they all border 
the Mediterranean Sea. So that's really where it comes from. So you've got an area here rich in fertile soil, great vegetables, great fish. It's very well known for its olive oils and things like that. So very high omega-3 fats, the fish, all the great seafood, all the great food in this region you can have, and they all fit beautifully in with the keto diet. I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's start talking about a little bit of the differences because it's not going to be so cut and dry how we can make this switch, but you're going to start to see some differences here. Number one is that in the Mediterranean diet, you are allowed to eat grains. Now, of course, on keto, we're not going to do that. So this is where we're not going to have that overlap. So the purpose of this slide is to really go over some of the differences and not the, the similarities. Whole grains, fruits. Now, you can have fruit on the keto diet, but you're going to want to make sure it's low glycemic index fruits. But over here, it's pretty wide open. You could have pretty much any kind of fruit you want. Starchy vegetables, you're not going to see that on the keto diet, of course. You're not going to see potatoes and, and squash and things like that. So this is really more the Mediterranean diet. And beans and legumes, right? You're not going to see those once again. They're not on the keto diet. Beans and legumes tend to have a lot of lectins in it, which are anti-nutrients, keep your body from absorbing some of the other nutrients you take in. But also, too, a lot of the beans are predominantly carbohydrates. If you look up any of the beans and put it into your... Uh, carb calculator or your macros calculator, you're going to find that is a lot of a lot of uh, starch in beans. Now, fresh regional regional foods. Now, not that you don't eat clean on the keto diet, but here's the thing: it's a staple. It is a way of life that you're going to have the freshest, most organically grown produce, and they don't even need to call it organic because over there it's just grown without all these pesticides. That's the way it is. They don't put all this junk on it that we do here in the States. So over there, and, and maybe you live in those parts of the world. My cousins may be listening right now. My cousins are all over in Italy. Um, these people, just their food is grown of the purest standards, the freshest ingredients. They don't buy food a week in advance. They buy it that day as they're going to cook it. So the freshest regional whole foods picked typically also at the peak of freshness and during in season. You don't get it out of season. They don't ship things in like we do in the States where you're shipping things in from Chile and Guatemala and Mexico and so forth. Uh, macros. Macros are counted on the keto diet, but not at all on the Mediterranean diet. Mediterranean diet is not looking at it. It's just mainly looking more at whole foods. But there is huge benefits to being on this side of the equation when it comes to mitochondrial function, brain function, overall body function, disease fighting capabilities, cancer prevention, heart disease prevention, cholesterol issues, and you name it. So there's a ton of benefit to be on this side also. So let's now get into some of the different foods. When This is the overlap. So this is the similarities between the two. Look at the plethora. And there's three slides on this one. So there is a ton of vegetables that you could be eating on the keto diet that are also on the Mediterranean diet. So like I said, you've got the best of both worlds. Arugula. I love arugula salads. It is one of the most earthy, healthy, green leafy vegetables you can eat. I love it so much with salad. I just drizzle olive oil on it, some lemon juice, some salt, some pepper, and shaved Parmesan Reggiano cheese, and I'm in heaven. You want to add some olives to it, get even more healthy fats. It's fantastic. Put some grilled chicken on it, drizzle more olive oil. It's amazing. I love it. It's one of my favorite artichokes. One of the best prebiotic fibers you can possibly get. Artichokes are amazingly healthy. Asparagus, you don't get much more nutritious than asparagus. They are fantastic. Bell peppers, beets, Brussels sprouts. You're getting into your cruciferous vegetables, your anti-cancer vegetables. Broccoli, broccolini, broccoli rabe. All the broccolis are great. I love to say they're from Italy, but um, they're fantastic anti-cancer fighting properties, especially with those. Uh, cabbage, another cruciferous vegetable. So once again, you're loading up on your cruciferous anti-cancer vegetables here. Carrots and celery. Not so many carrots on the, on the keto diet because it does have sugar in it, but you can still have a little bit. And a little bit's not going to hurt you. Next, chicory, collard greens. You know, chicory is a little bit bitter, so you might not have a taste for that, but collard greens are fantastic. On the Andy score, which is the aggregate nutrient density index, some of you have heard me talk about that, it basically evaluates foods as nutritionally dense on a scale of 1 to 1,000. Collard greens are at 1,000. They are rock stars, just like you guys. They are rock stars. Cauliflower, another fantastic vegetable for anti-cancer fighting. Dandelions. My neighbors uh, like to call those weeds, and a lot of times they are. They're growing in your, 
in your, uh, in your yard as a weed, but Italians love to eat that. In fact, a lot of people feel like arugula is really a uh, member of the dandelion family. Garlic, of course, leeks, fennel, fantastic. Great on salads, eggplant, beans, and of course, really greens of all kind, whether it be Swiss chard, once again, collards, things like that. Your greens, your heavy, dense, leafy green vegetables are fantastic. Speaking about one of your other rock stars, you have kale, also a thousand on the Andy score. Kale is a wonderful, wonderful uh, leafy green vegetable that you can put into salads. Just use lacinato kale. It's much better. A lot of you are shied away from kale because it tends to have a little bit of bitterness to it. Well, that's your curly kale. That's the kind you typically put on, you know, uh, plates for garnish. You don't want to use that. Use lacinato kale, sometimes called dinosaur kale. It is fantastic. Drizzle some olive oil on it. Put some salt on it, some lemon juice. It starts to cause it to wilt. You work it with your hands. You just kind of work it like this. Next thing you know, you add some pine nuts, some bed bell peppers, whatever you want, and you've got a wonderful, wonderful salad there. Mustard greens, mushrooms, mushrooms of all kinds, onions, shallots, radishes. The list goes on and on. Swiss chard, zucchini, all these wonderful, wonderful vegetables are on both. So once again, this is all about the crossover. This is all about the commonality of it. Fats, well, tons and tons of healthy fats. You have your beef tallow. So beef fat. A lot of people ask me, what about beef fat? Well, I like to be able to control the amount of fat I put on food. So when it comes to beef tallow, I get to spoon that out, put it in the pan, and use it to make eggs in it, use it to maybe uh, grill some meat and things like that. So beef tallow is fantastic. Lard, of course, is from pigs. You know, you're looking at things like prosciutto in Italy. You know, this is amazing, amazing, high-quality pork. Now, a lot of you will say, well, Dr. Nick, I thought you don't like pork. Pork is good. I like pork. It's okay. If pork is coming from a reliable source, if it's typically pasture-raised, if it's out eating whatever it wants to eat, grubs and grass and things like that, but if you're force-feeding it steroids and antibiotics and giving it all kinds of unnatural things that it doesn't typically want to eat just because you're trying to, you know, fatten it up for commercial use, that's the kind of problems I have. Avocado, coconut milk, coconut oil, coconut flakes, lots and lots of coconut, coconut butter. Now, a lot of people will ask me, what's the difference between coconut butter and coconut oil? Well, coconut butter is mainly like a puree of coconut. So if you took coconut flakes and put it in a food processor and just blended it, eventually it's going to form a paste. It's going to release some of the oil and it's going to form a paste. That's what I'm talking about. Coconut oil is liquidy, slippery, and clear at room temperature. Coconut uh, paste, coconut manna, or coconut butter is more of a pasty type of texture, kind of similar to peanut butter. Uh, extra virgin olive oil. You know, when you think about the, the cornerstone of all Mediterranean cooking, it's going to be around olive oil. Olive oil is probably one of the greatest oils that God ever created. Monounsaturated fats, just fantastic. Great to get you into ketosis. You want to make sure when you're cooking it with it, you're cooking at a very low temperature. You're not trying to fry so much with olive oil. It's a delicate oil, and you will absolutely cause it to oxidize, make it go rancid, and it's going to be a bad oil. So you want to maybe drizzle it on things, put things on after cooking, but you don't want to cook with it at a high heat. It doesn't work. Avocado oil is great for high heats. The smoking point's about 460, so it can handle high heats really well. Walnut is also a great oil to use for high heats. It can handle high heats. Macadamia nut oil and of course MCT oil. I don't cook with MCT oil. I typically will put that on things. And MCT oil really, the best ones come from coconut. So once again, it's a, it's a version of coconut oil. It's the best part of the coconut. As for your proteins, well first let's start with your meat, your poultry, your pork, things like that. Well you've got beef, you've got buffalo, venison, pork, lamb, all these great meats all these fantastic meats, especially, once again, in the Mediterranean where they're just out grazing. They're not in stalls or in cages like, you know, here in the States. So when you're doing, say, the keto diet, make sure you're getting really good quality meats. And if you can't, I understand. That's all right. I don't want you to think that, hey, if you can't get the highest quality grass-fed meats and, hey, I can't do keto. That's not the case. I don't want you thinking keto is a diet for the elite that only rich people can do it. Please don't think that. Even if you're not getting grass-fed meats and grass-fed butter and things like that, that's okay. It's more important that you're eating this type of food rather than, 
you know, your standard grain and corn and rice and wheat and all that kind of stuff. Much, much better eating this way, even if you can't get the grass fed or grass finished. Don't worry about it. But if you can, very, very good. Uh, chicken, eggs galore. You can eat a ton of eggs on this. And who, you know, you can do anything you want with eggs. You can make omelets, you can make frittatas, you could do anything with this. One of the things I'm learning how to make just recently, I, in fact, I probably should do a video on it, except it's just so easy is chaffles. Have you guys ever heard of chaffles? Chaffles are basically cheese and egg. You mix it together, you pour it into this single size waffle iron, and then you put the top down on it, and about three, four minutes later, you open it up, and you've got a waffle made out of cheese and egg. And it's fantastic if you want to make it so you can make a sandwich out of it, you use it for that. If you want to make it so that you uh, put some cinnamon or butter on it, make it more sweet. You can make it savory. You could add garlic to it. You can do whatever you want. It's an empty palate. It's a clean slate. You can do whatever you want with it, and you can make something like a breakfast, uh, a sweet kind of pancake-y kind of breakfast, and put some nice Choc Zero syrup on it that's made with monk fruit. you got a great combination there. If you want to make a sandwich out of it, you can make a BLT, whatever you want. It's fantastic. Turkey, duck, all great meats, all these fantastic meats are on both the keto and the Mediterranean diet. Next, what's a Mediterranean diet without fish, right? Your sardines, your flounder, your tuna, your salmon, mackerel, things like that. I remember growing up as a kid, my mother and my grandmother always had these tiny little fish around the holidays. They looked like shiners. I don't even know what they were called, but they're tiny little fish. You'd eat the whole thing. I mean, I can remember you open up the thing the container and they had their heads and everything on it, tails, it was just a whole fish, but you, you ate it all and it was good for you. Cod, I just had cod today for, for dinner. Salmon yesterday, red snapper, herring, mahi-mahi, trout, uh, shark, mackerel. Now, it's going to be much better, I will tell you this, if you eat the smaller fish, your sardines, your things like that, your anchovies, the smaller fish are going to have less of a heavy metal load on them. The smaller fish don't have as much metals in them. So it's going to be much healthier. And plus, they have a fantastic, fantastic lipid profile when it comes to omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. One of the great things about these kind of fats, and I'm sorry, these kind of fish, is that they've got much more omega-3 in them than other types of fish. And omega-3 is fantastic because it's very anti-inflammatory. You don't want foods that are so high in omega-6. So if you're eating grass-fed, uh, grass finished meat, it's going to be a much, much better uh, fatty profile of omega 3 to omega 6. Shellfish, love shellfish too, right? Good. I love a good crustacean. Shrimp, scallops, lobster, clams, mussels, all on the ketogenic diet and the Mediterranean diet. Oysters, crayfish, clams, squid, all the shellfish you want. They're all, and I, I tell you, we've got Christmas coming up soon. I don't know about you, but like I said, being Italian, I do the seven fishes. So on Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve for me is all about seven different fish. So it is a fish fest. <laughs> Hopefully when people call my house, we let them know it's going to be all fish. Spaghetti with clam sauce or mussels oregonata, shrimp, scampi, cioppino, you name it, we make it. And it's all seven kinds of fish. In fact, sometimes I have eight or nine kinds of fish. So we'll see what this year comes. Nuts and seeds, once again, Christmas, Thanksgiving time, I always love those times of the year, obviously because they're great holidays, but we'd always have these big feasts, and at the end of the feast, there would always be all the different cakes and pastries and so on, but all the men would sit around a table just cracking nuts, you know, filberts, macadamia nuts, Brazil nuts, you name it, walnuts, we had them all around the table, and it just made a mess everywhere. Anyway, hazelnuts, almonds, Brazil nuts, macadamia nuts, almond butter, chia seeds, all these fantastic seeds and nuts are wonderful, wonderful. And once again, they could be thrown on a salad, they could be eaten plain. I uh, just did a video the other day where I made almond snacks, where I took almonds, I sprouted them, which meant that I let them sit in water overnight. It helps to make them more digestible. Uh, and so what I then did is dried them off, seasoned them up with some olive oil and whatever seasons you like, popped them back in the oven at about 400 degrees or 350 degrees for about seven minutes. And all you're doing is just kind of bacon the coating on it. You're not cooking it. You're not roasting it. And you've got some amazing high quality healthy almonds just all seasoned up adding right to your Mediterranean slash keto diet. All right. We also see pistachio nuts. I eat pistachio nuts by the bucket full. I don't know about you guys, especially when they're shelled. 
I can't put them down. In, in Italian cooking, they're everywhere. Not only that, in Italy, you find them in the ice cream. You have pistachio ice cream, and it is a delicacy. Everybody loves pistachio ice cream. Once again, walnuts, cashews, hemp seeds. Hemp seeds, fantastic source of protein, sesame seeds, and coconut. So all your seeds and nuts. Now, for fruit, once again, you can have fruit on the keto diet, and it's loaded up typically with your berries, your high antioxidant foods, uh, fruits loaded up with flavonoids. So your blackberries, your raspberries, blueberries. If you're going to have apples, make sure your apples are at least the green apples, so that way they're not so high in sugar. So you don't want delicious, you don't want Fuji, you don't want App Crisp. There's also one called uh, Apple Crisp, I believe. So you want to avoid those because they're a lot sweeter. You want to make sure you're eating the green, the Granny Smith kind. Strawberries, grapefruit, kiwi, raspberries, and tomatoes. Tomatoes are a fruit, believe it or not. They're not a vegetable, so they are a fruit. But tomatoes are best cooked, so you want to cook tomatoes. That's when you get the most nutritious value out of it. There's an antioxidant, very powerful, called lycopene in there. So dairy. Now, Dairy does cross both. Of course, we all know about the amazing cheeses in Italy and France and so on. So you're looking at things like your Reggiano Parmigiano, which to an Italian, we recognize that as the king of all cheeses. I mean, that's the best there is. Mozzarella. Mozzarella, you, and that, by the way, that's what you want to use in your chaffles, mozzarella, because the mozzarella is going to be uh, very low as far as it doesn't have a lot of flavor like a cheddar. So if you're looking for something to mix with the eggs and, and make it so it's not a lot of cheesy taste, mozzarella, okay? Ricotta, pecorino romano, feta, brie cheese, another great cheese. And Except when you do your brie cheese, you don't want to put apricots and stuff on top, all that jelly. That's delicious, but you don't want to put it on here. Heavy cream. Now, of course, the milk in this region is typically going to be from goat or it's going to be from grass-fed cows. So you're going to get much, much higher quality milks and creams and cheeses over there. Like I said, goat cheese and, of course, Greek yogurt. So, guys, there is a plethora, plethora of crossover that we see here between these two diets. Everybody knows that the Mediterranean diet, like I said, is one of the finest in the world, finest on the planet because of its antioxidant anti-inflammatory properties, all the great omega-3 fats in it. And it is just one of those longevity diets that you know that you're going to live a long time eating that. But at the same time, all the amazing health benefits of the keto diet, the brain cognitive function, the epilepsy, helping patients with heart disease, cancer, diabetes, you name it, mitochondrial disorders, and just the simple fact that your body works better on ketones than it does carbohydrates. When you combine these two, it's like the super twins. All right, you're combining the best of both worlds. So when you take the Mediterranean diet and marry it with the keto diet, you're going to have the keto terranean diet. Okay, so maybe I should do a cookbook on that or something. I don't know. Either way, guys, I hope this is great information for you. And if so, once again, please make sure you like, you share, you comment, and subscribe. And I thank you so much for watching my channel. I thank you so much for your support. I love and appreciate you guys. And once again, if you do need more help, check out the link below and look at our course, see if it's a fit for you. It is the best keto course on the market. Well, guys, thanks again. Keep those testimonials coming. You guys are rock stars out there. I love and appreciate you. God bless. This is Dr. Nick, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.